Hello everyone. Welcome to a brand new social media series brought to you by ISWOG, the International Society of Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology. My name is Dr. Matthew Leonardi. I'm coming to you from McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. This new social media series is called Three Things Ultrasound Can Teach You About. Today's session is going to be all about endometriosis. Before delving into the three things that ultrasound can teach you about endometriosis, it's important that we define the disease. Endometriosis is a benign, chronic, systemic, inflammatory disease that can affect any individual who is assigned female at birth. It is a disease that is made up of tissue that is growing in the incorrect place. This is endometrial-like tissue that grows outside of the uterus. It can grow on the pelvic peritoneum. It can grow on the organs in the pelvis, including the ovaries, the uterus, the bowel, the bladder, and it can invade these structures as well, which is called deep endometriosis. The first thing that ultrasound can teach us about endometriosis is in regards to ovarian cysts. Ovarian cysts in the context of endometriosis are called endometriomas, ovarian endometriomas. And these are very common. It's a very common way that an endometriosis patient receives an ultrasound diagnosis of endometriosis. Ovarian endometriomas are thought to be benign ovarian cysts with very classic appearances on ultrasound. We can look to the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis Group's work to help us decide whether something is an endometrioma. These masses are usually unilocular, meaning they're made up of one fluid-filled component. They generally have low-level ground glass echogenicity. That's the appearance of the fluid on the ultrasound. Most of the time, endometriomas have smooth, regular cyst walls. And when using color Doppler assessment of endometriomas, they generally have very minimal color Doppler vascularity on ultrasound. The second thing that ultrasound can teach us about endometriosis is in regards to deep endometriosis, and in particular, deep endometriosis of the posterior compartment where the bowel exists. And bowel endometriosis is incredibly important to identify on ultrasound because the identification of bowel endometriosis can change the patient's course of care very dramatically. So the preoperative ultrasound-based diagnosis is of the utmost importance. Bowel endometriosis has a very characteristic appearance. It generally exists in the upper rectum, which is the rectum that's just within the pelvis, in the intraperitoneal cavity. It has a hypoechoic appearance within the muscularis layer of the rectum. Bowel endometriosis can be assessed in a few ways that help a clinical team decide on the management approach. Where exactly is the lesion? How big is the lesion? How long is the lesion? How thick is the lesion? And how wide is the lesion? Those measurements can help us understand whether a patient may need to undergo a segmental bowel resection, a discectomy, or potentially could undergo a shaving procedure whereby the bowel uh, lumen is actually not entered during the procedure. The third thing that ultrasound can teach us about endometriosis is in regards to adhesions. Endometriosis commonly causes adhesions within the pelvis. Adhesions can be very small, filmy adhesions that don't truly hold organs tightly together, or they can be very dense fibrotic adhesions that tremendously distort the anatomy of the pelvis, whereby the bowel is very stuck to the back of the uterus and the vagina, the ovaries are pulled in inferiorly to the level of the uterosacral ligaments. Adhesions are really important to identify using ultrasound, which is a dynamic test, which is different from any other imaging test that we have access to. We can assess for adhesions to understand the extent of the patient's endometriosis disease. In many of the staging systems that exist for classifying endometriosis, adhesions contribute to the allocation of points, which is how a stage is calculated. 
So adhesions can be very easily identified by using the dynamic nature of ultrasound, a combination of moving the probe that's usually in the sonographer, sonologist's right hand, and or using the other hand to push on the patient's abdomen to elicit movement and structures. I would say the two most important types of adhesions to identify in a patient that will have a major impact on the surgical outcomes of the patient include the rectouterine pouch obliteration state. This is elicited on ultrasound through the sliding sign technique. A positive sliding sign shows that the uterus and the rectum, the content behind the uterus, move distinctly from one another. Whereas a negative sliding sign, we don't see that sliding motion. Those structures are usually very densely adherent to each other, and as you apply pressure with the probe or the hand through the belly, those structures move in unison. It's a negative sliding sign. The second most important type of adhesion to identify is the adhesions associated with the ovaries, particularly when the ovaries are including endometriomas, and those are stuck to deep endometriosis, usually of the uterosacral ligaments. Inferior adhesions are very common in endometriosis, and those adhesions are important to identify because the dissection of those adhesions has a big impact on the nearby structures of the bowel and the ureters. When we do endometriosis surgery, it's very important that we try as best as possible to preserve all of the important normal anatomy. We don't create new problems for the patients. And so preparedness for surgery by knowing about the adhesion state can reduce the chance of surgical complications and improve the chance of a good clinical outcome. Thanks for joining us on ISWOG's socials to learn more about what ultrasound can teach us in the world of obstetrics and gynecology. Take care.